Today I'm going to share with you guys some tips for traveling to Iceland. So the first thing that I want to talk about are there are two different airports that you can choose to go into. The major one is right here in Reykjavik and that one is the main hub and that's where most people go in and by hub I mean there's about one to two flights a day to hops through Iceland Air. Your other choice would be up here in Accurary. However, that one is a lot tougher because it's a much smaller airport to get into. Whenever you start researching about the biggest things to look out for in Iceland, one of the major things that comes up is the weather. When I had gone here, we chose to go the ring road um, counterclockwise. There's a huge debate, clockwise or counterclockwise. We went counterclockwise because in that case, you end up starting with your, um, it's the most populated area in Reykjavik, and then you head along the south coast. So this ring road is this one major road right here, and it's the only road that actually goes around the entire country. There's only 350,000 people in the entire country, so the ring road wasn't completed until very recently in history. And on the south coast here, the weather's about 55 degrees and super rainy, so you're going to want to plan accordingly. And as you start up here on our east coast, you end up getting some nicer weather. And we had the best weather in the north. It's usually drier year round. And we were there during a heat wave. And in June of 2021, it got up to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we were in Accurary, it actually had the most gorgeous weather in the universe. As you head to the northwest and the west-northwest, you're going to encounter a lot of fjords, um, and there are the western fjords. And the western fjords have the most majestic landscape ever, and it's kind of deadly, so you need to be careful when you're driving. There's a lot of fog and one-lane roads and cliffs and switchbacks, but it's well worth it because you can see puffins and some really beautiful landscape while you're out there. So if you follow the ring road the entire way around, you'll end up back in Reykjavik. And before you leave and as you're planning, you should take a couple things to heart. Um, Iceland people are very genuine, and I know this is stereotypical, but I am going to make a stereotype because it's positive here. Um, almost no one steals in Iceland. So in the big city in Reykjavik, um, their people do lock their doors. But as you continue into the more rural areas, when I was down here in Hetla, um, people left their keys in their cars in case of an emergency, in case someone was in inclement weather and needed to borrow it. And the other thing I think that you should all know is the alphabet. So the alphabet So the Icelandic alphabet is really challenging for me, at least. And so I found it helpful to look up a language chart. And I thought it was really interesting. Some of the letters, you know, are exactly the same, but it's funny to hear Americans go over there and try to pronounce it phonetically. Some of the ones that gave me the hardest time, a G, um, depending on where it is in the alphabet, will be pronounced entirely differently. At the beginning, it's going to be a hard G sound. And in the middle, it's more of like a J, like in Germany. And then they have extra letters there that we don't necessarily have here in America. So this A and E together make an I sound. And this, which I would think of as an U or an O, is actually an E as an end. So I highly suggest that you guys go to Iceland. It is one of the coolest places ever, and the people are friendly, and the culture is wonderful. And that's the end of the presentation.